Hi guys, Aaron Dorr here with the Missouri Firearms Coalition with some information for gun owners in the northwest edge of St. Charles County, House District number 64. Again, it's this area up here in the, in the top northwest corner of the county and it covers a couple different communities in this area. We're getting a lot of questions though. It's a three-way primary and a lot of you guys are asking us who is the pro-gun champion in this race. Now again, the context here matters. This is a primary and it's Missouri, right? So everybody on the Republican ticket claims to be pro-gun. That's a box you simply have to check. So our job here at the Firearms Coalition is to figure out which of these candidates is pro-gun, which candidates at least profess to be pro-gun, and then who has a record to back up their campaign statements. The bottom line is that campaign speech is cheap. Campaign promises are cheap. And so the question is, who will not just raise their hand and say, I'm pro-gun at election time, who will fight for our gun rights once they're safely in office? We do that by doing a very thorough candidate survey program. We ask the candidates where you stand on the issues of the day. And we also combine all of our working knowledge of the candidates. If they're incumbents, their previous votes, we check their websites, their Facebook pages, social media, where do these people stand and how will they stand going forward when it comes to your gun rights? The goal here is not to tell you who to vote for. We can't do that. Our job here is to give you guys the full picture on these candidates when it comes to the Second Amendment. That's the goal of this video here today. So again, this is HD 64, St. Charles County, not too far up in the, 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 the corner outside of St. Louis, a three-way primary. We have an incumbent here. Tony Lavasco, Representative Lavasco, four-year incumbent in Jeff City. And then we have two challengers. Mike Swearington and Dina Self, or Deanna Self, are challenging in this race. So here's what we know. We'll start with Deanna Self first. Deanna is a counselor uh, in her day job, but right now she is not completing. She is refusing to answer the Missouri Firearms Coalition candidate survey. Like I told you guys, when a candidate won't answer a simple 10, 10 question, yes or no style candidate survey, it's often a sign to us that if elected, this candidate as a legislator would likely choose to side with the rhino class in Jeff City and vote in a way that's harmful to our gun rights. Will they vote no on a gun bill? No, that's not how it works. What they do is they hold bills back in committee and keep them from the floor in the first place by never pushing leadership to get off their butt and move bills forward. So when we see candidates who are refusing to sign that survey, that's a very big concern. A lot of Republicans across the country and some here in Missouri support red flag gun seizures. Will Deanna Self vote for that? We don't know. Will she vote to repeal portions of to weaken Missouri's SAPA law? We don't know, she won't answer. How about any future efforts from Republicans, mind you, to raise the age on when Missourians can buy AR-15s? Will she vote to support that? We don't know because Deanna Self continues to refuse to answer the survey. That's a bad sign. That's a big concern. Now, you may say to yourself, I saw her at a parade. You know, I saw her at an event said she was pro-gun. Well, the question you have to ask yourself is, well, then why won't she survey? Like, what's the problem? We have hundreds of surveys back from candidates all across the state. Why won't she put her views on paper? What's the big deal? What is she trying to hide? Those are questions you should ask her if you see her on the campaign trail. Let's move on to Mike Swearington. This situation's a little more complex. It's just more complex, as you're about to find out. First, we'll give you guys kind of the good news. Mike Swearingham has completed the survey 100% pro-gun, and we're going to acknowledge that. But this is not our first rodeo. And so, again, the challenge we have is always to figure out who actually believes what they're putting on that survey, who will back it up with actions, and who was trying to use our survey as a way to get out from underneath the Missouri Firearms Coalition Club. That's a question we have to dance with every two years in these Republican Party primaries. And I gotta tell you, when it comes to Mike Swearington, it's a confusing situation. Yeah, he surveyed, and that's good. 
But the word's getting out in Jeff City. And the rhinos are telling other rhino candidates, if you want to avoid getting hammered by the Missouri Firearms Coalition, you better do their survey. Whether you ignore it or break your promise down the road, who cares? Once you're in office, who cares? Now, I'm not saying that's happening here. I don't know that to be the case 100%. But what I know is that there's no mention of the Second Amendment on Mike Swearingham's website. There's almost no mention of the Second Amendment on his Facebook program, Facebook page. There's almost no mention, there's no mention I could see on any other social media platforms. You know, usually in a Republican Party primary, when a candidate's pro-gun, it's Missouri, they're loudly proclaiming their support for the Second Amendment. For heaven's sakes, we just had the biggest gun control bill in three decades pass in Washington, D.C. If you're a pro-gun candidate, these are the kind of days when you're out there loudly saying you'll fight for the Second Amendment. You'll fight for freedom. Not seeing any of that from Mike Swearingham. None of it. None of it. And that's highly irregular for a Republican Party primary here in Missouri this close to the August 2nd primary. That's a question mark. That's a, that's a warning sign to us. But then, going deeper into his profile, we see that Mike Swearingham was endorsed by the AFL-CIO. Now, this is the Missouri Firearms Coalition, not the Missouri you know, Right to Work organization, so I'm not taking a stance on that issue. But here's what I can tell you. I've done gun politics for over 15 years now in lots of states. And in my entire career, I've only ever seen the AFL CIO back anti-gun, you know, rabid gun control style candidates. In fact, I've never seen them make an endorsement in a Republican Party primary, ever, anywhere. Again, this is not the, the right to work organization, but the AFL-CIO is a big time supporter of gun control at the state and federal level. And so when I see a candidate in a Republican Party primary endorsed by the AFL-CIO, a candidate who never mentions gun rights in any capacity on his, on his campaign website, something's not adding up. Something's not adding up. That brings us to Tony Lavasco. Representative Lavasco is a four-year incumbent in the Missouri House. And Representative Lavasco, there's a lot of clarity about where Tony stands. First of all, Tony has surveyed 100% with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. We're always happy to acknowledge those surveys. That means he opposes any attempt to pass red flag laws, ban AR-15s, pass universal gun registration, you know, we can say the law 100% across the board. But again, like I told you, a lot of candidates can claim that. How does it jive with the rest of their picture as a candidate? Again, in the case of Lavasco, this is very easy. He's elected. Tony Lavasco has votes, has a record on the Second Amendment we can easily talk to you guys about. We're happy to say that Tony Lavasco in the House fought and fought and fought to fight, to pass, excuse me, the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Tony was a leader in our fight to advance SEPA. And again, as you guys know, we didn't just pass SEPA. We passed the nation's best in the country Second Amendment Preservation Act. It is the roadmap for freedom that red states around the country are following right now. That's why the DOJ is trying so hard to repeal Missouri's SEPA law and nobody else's. Tony Lavasco was a major part of the reason why we passed that bill and not just passed it, but passed it so early in the session in 2021. So when he says he's not going to vote to weaken it, that's not a hard claim to believe because the guy fought to pass it the way it is. Number one. Number two, this session, just a couple months ago, Tony Lavasco fought in committee to help us expand Missouri's stand your ground law. As you guys know, that was our big push this year in Jeff City, House Bill 2118. You know, Missouri has a weird self-defense idea in, in, by making you and I prove our innocence in court. And it seems kind of straightforward, but the reality is, as Americans, as accused, it's the government's job to prove that we broke the law, right? We're presumed innocent until proven guilty. 
But here in Missouri, we have to prove our innocence in court. That's backwards. That's how Mark McCloskey and his wife got taken down by Kim Gardner. This idea that we have to prove our innocence is, is backwards, and dozens of states have already fixed that. Our job, our goal is to fix that here in Missouri. And this session in committee, when the Democrats were fighting like dogs, attacking me in committee, it was Lavasco who stood there and went toe-to-toe, -to -toe fighting for the Second Amendment and fighting for House Bill 2118. Prior to that, in the years prior to SEPA, and this, the fight this year, Lavasco was a lead supporter, a lead co-sponsor on our efforts to repeal deadly gun-free zones. Everyone knows Missouri's got a crime problem. It's in the blue cities, right? We all know this. Mass transit, you know, churches, libraries, all these areas where we can't carry because we have state law and we have city ordinances that say we have to disarm in these places. Lavasco has been a leader in the fight to get rid of deadly gun-free zones here in Missouri. So when you add these whole data sets up, you've got Tony Lavasco, 100% survey, with four years of track record in Jeff City fighting for gun rights. SAPA, stand your ground law, get rid of deadly gun-free zones. His record matches his survey. When it comes to Mike Swearington, you've got a survey, but you've got nothing else that backs that up. And again, in a big concern to us, you have an endorsement from an incredibly anti-gun organization, the AFL-CIO. Very dangerous friends to have for a Republican in a Republican Party primary. And then you got Deanna Self again, no survey, will not tell us how she'll vote on Republican-sponsored bills to weaken our gun rights. That's a big concern. So guys, when you're out in the campaign uh, at events, you see him on the campaign trail, you see him at forums, be sure and thank Tony for fighting for gun rights for four years, and thank him for signing his survey 100% pro-gun. And you need to ask Mike Swearingham, why have they endorsed you? They've never been a friend to gun owners. Why are they endorsing you? How does that square with your professed support for the Second Amendment? Are you really going to fight for gun rights, or is it part of a campaign strategy? Ask him that question. And be sure and ask Deanna as well, why won't you survey? What is the problem? Folks, that's what we have for you. Share our video far and wide. Get the word out there. And join our fight for freedom today at www.joinmofc.com.